In this video, I'm going to answer one of the most common questions that I get on YouTube, which is, why is there a scrunchie on your guitar? I'll give you the short answer, then we'll talk about sympathetic vibration, and I will share a couple other applications that this scrunchy thing is useful for, including that it helps to mute a really gnarly sound that the guitar makes when doing a certain technique. So here's the quick answer for why I use this scrunchy looking thing on the head of my guitar. I'm going to strum all of the open strings really hard. I'm going to mute them completely, and then we're going to listen for a high pitch ringing sound that's still happening after that. Let's do that. Now I'm going to strum the strings while muting them, and we're going to listen for that same sound. So the strings themselves should not be vibrating, but we're listening for what kind of sound comes out. Now I'm going to do those same two things with the scrunchy thing, which is actually a, a wristband, and people use all kinds of whatever to mute the, the strings above the nut here. I'm going to put this on, and we're going to listen to those same two examples. Example one. Completely quiet. Example two completely quiet. Let's compare those back to back with the other versions that I did before putting this back on. That's the short answer to show you it's actually doing something. So just for fun, since that's not much of a lesson, let's talk about what's actually causing that to happen which is sympathetic vibration. Now, if you go really deep in this direction, you're getting into physics and math, and I'm definitely not an expert on this kind of stuff, the acoustics and physics of music. Uh, it's all really interesting stuff. I'm just gonna explain it from a very surface level understanding that I have that is enough to be beneficial as a musician. So here's the dictionary definition of sympathetic vibration, also called sympathetic resonance. Sympathetic vibration is a vibration produced in one body by the vibrations of exactly the same frequency in a neighboring body. Some examples of this include if you take a tuning fork and if I had two of these and I let one vibrate and I put it right up next to the other one that was of the same pitch, just from the air vibration around it, it would trigger the other one to vibrate. And by that vibrating, it would cause the same sound because the air around that would, would vibrate. That is sympathetic vibration. Another example of this is the funny kind of cartoon trope of a opera singer singing so high pitched and so loud that all the windows around break. That would be from sympathetic vibration. Another example of this is your eardrum. The reason you can hear anything at all is because your eardrum is sympathetically vibrating uh, with the sound pressure waves that are vibrating in the air. Your eardrum vibrates at those same frequencies and that's what we hear as sound. Here's exactly how this works. Sound is just air vibrating as a certain frequency, a certain number of vibrations per second, which is what a hertz is. A hertz is a measurement of cycles per second. So this A440 tuning fork, it's called A440 because it vibrates at 440 hertz. That's 440 vibrations per second. Then the air around it, when it vibrates, the air around it vibrates at 440 vibrations per second because it's moving and it's pushing the air. So the air is vibrating at that exact same frequency. And then your eardrum vibrates at 440 vibrations per second when it hears that. And that is what the sound is. Let's hear that now. So when anything solid is capable of vibrating and when sound pressure waves hit it at the frequency that it's capable of vibrating at, it's going to trigger that vibration, which of course, when it vibrates, it's going to make the air around it vibrate and create more of that exact same frequency that came to it. And it's making the same pitch that it was triggered by in the first place. Here are more examples with actual demonstrations. If I vibrate this tuning fork and put it up against the guitar, because the guitar is designed to project sound, we're now hearing the tiny vibration of this resonating through the guitar and making a much louder sound. That's how I was taught to tune the guitar. Do this, do this, play your A, tune it, tune the rest of the guitar to the A. Here's another similar example that's kind of fun. So my voice going through all those pitches triggered whatever sympathetic V vibration that these strings are capable of through the guitar and we heard it ringing after that. That's actually one of the applications of this muting scrunchy thing is that I'll pull it down like this and when the guitar is hanging on the wall, I have them hanging with the strings muted because otherwise when I'm talking or playing or recording or teaching, uh, just from any noise that's happening, you might start hearing the guitars ring while they're hanging on the wall. So it 
quiets them up. So this principle that something vibrating is gonna trigger the open strings and therefore other strings that you're playing on the guitar are gonna trigger other strings. This can be taken advantage of when playing solo guitar music, that is music on the guitar that's complete. You're playing the bass roll and the harmony roll and the melody roll all at once, full sound of music. We can very purposefully take advantage of this and in many instances not be aware of how it's helping us, but it's kind of gluing together this connected sound because in solo guitar music we're wanting things to feel connected and it's one of the biggest technique challenges is keeping the melody connected keeping the harmony making sure voices don't feel like they're cut off and everything is smooth and while we're playing many things at once well there are instances where this triggering of open strings is really beneficial while we're switching positions and there's a little bit of ringing sound maybe from the open b string or the open e string and you don't feel this silence cut off kind of choppiness um, and we can again in some instances be aware of that happening and use it and many times it's just helping us uh, have a more cohesive sound so it is a beautiful part of the nature of the instrument now check this out let's make this happen on purpose if i play this open e and then I mute all of the strings, including the E, and mute everything except for the open B string. Let's hear what happens. I'm muting everything that is not the open B. So nothing can be ringing now, except for this pitch, which you should have heard. Sounds different, there's a different timbre to it. But it's that pitch, let's listen for it again, that should be ringing after I play the open E and then mute everything other than the B string. And one more example, I'll just have the strings muted in the first place. Everything's muted, I'm touching every string except for E and B, and I will mute E right after playing it. One more time, and then I'm gonna mute the B too, so you can really hear that it was ringing and that I'm stopping it from touching the second string after it's ringing. <laughs> cut it off. As soon as I touch the B string, it cut it off. Okay, so the low open E string is triggering with sympathetic vibration the open B string. But wait a second, the definition of sympathetic vibration is that the neighboring body is vibrating at the same frequency. And this pitch is not the same frequency as this pitch. That's because of overtones and harmonics. This pitch is actually inside of this pitch. And if you listen carefully, you can hear it in there. A great little ear training exercise listen 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 deeply for that so that's because of overtones and harmonics and every pitch is actually multiple pitches stacked on top of each other getting into that is too much for this video but i am going to do a video on harmonics and overtones explained for guitar players in the future if that is of particular interest to you please let me know in the comments so i can bump up the priority of making that video if people actually want to hear about that topic i'll give you one more demonstration this is related to harmonics and overtones but it's something to show you because this is something that is very useful to have these uh, scrunchy muting things on your guitar. People use them for, th for this all the time. So listen to this sound. Really a bad sound, not a, not a normal pitch. A dissonant sound. We're not just hearing, I'm tapping the 12th fret on the A string. We're not just hearing the A note. We're basically hearing that half step above. So an out of tune kind of sharp half step above. That sound, that extra sound, that's not this pitch. We're not just hearing this. We're hearing this plus this. So if I hold this down and pluck on the left side, that's all, that's the vibration, the overtones and harmonics that exist on the left side of the fretted note. So application for our guitar scrunchie is to mute that and ah, now we just hear an actual, what we feel like is a clean note. Huge difference. Here's the clean one. Here's the dirty one. <laughs> so that's another way that people use these scrunchy, muting, wristband, uh, wraps, whatever they use to mute it. Pull it down here and you can do some tapping technique stuff on the guitar without all those overtones and open strings ringing uh, on the left side. If 
you don't have my chord chart yet called chords with color definitely download that it's totally free there's a link in the top of the description it's the coolest chord chart out there it's unlike anything else shows a bunch of chords and then alternative options for chords that have extensions and colorful notes and you can replace them interchangeably in a song in an arrangement uh, in whatever you want but it shows the theory you can listen to these beautiful uh, sounds and a lot of open string chords nothing too hard nothing with bars uh, just really cool chord chart link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color you can download that for free I post a new lesson video every week next week's lesson is on improvising over the song fly me to the moon with chord tones only this is one of the most important skills for jazz improvisation and I think any kind of lead guitar improvisation I posted a video about this recently and I got a lot of requests to help break it down a little more so this will be kind of a how to get into it how to get started improvising with chord tones and we'll use the song fly me to the moon it's gonna be a fun lesson hope to see you there thanks for watching take care and happy practicing